So um, I think we should make that. Yeah. And let's um, do that. I think yours might go well with mine. Okay, so we'll we'll merge. merge. So if you make your tea, and I'll make my little salad, Done. and we'll see I'll make how the we tea. play. Yep. We play the game together. So guys, um, tomato tea, consomme. There's lots of lots of different names. Do we all know where the aroma comes from a tomato? Anyone? That's right. So the stalks are really important, and I'll explain to you how we're going to get the aroma of the stalk into the flat into the tea. Okay. All right, we'll just leave that under there, OK? So, quarter tomatoes, remove the core, because that's quite bitter. A little bit of red onion. A little slither of garlic goes in there. A good heap of basil and some salt. A splash of Worcestershire, just add a, a, another dimension to it. A couple of drops of Tabasco sauce for a bit of kick. And we blend it. Once we blend it, we use muslin cloth, yeah? Just something that's going to strain away any of that, those impurities. So with our little green stalk, stalk here, we just rip that up so it starts releasing that flavour, yeah? While when the tea goes into the actual bowl. And then you'll see that. Look at that. That's liquid gold, yeah? That is just beautiful stuff there. That's got full flavour of tomato, OK? All right, so we'll leave that aside and we'll end up with a beautiful, clear tomato tea. Right. Little bacon crumble, if you want to call it that. Um, just add a bit of texture to the dish. Yep. And we're actually going to put the bacon crumble over the egg so it adds a, a texture to the egg, yeah? Another definition, as well as salt and really smoky, beautiful flavour. So we've, um, we've just shredded up the bacon and then we're finely dicing it, OK? Right, good splash of olive oil in there. Barry can give that a shake for me. That'd be great. You're nearly there. Thyme hole so we can pull them out. Lemon zest, because I think bacon and lemon is just really delicious. Garlic just to lift out some flavour. And literally at this point, we give it a shake, so it releases all that flavour in there. Herbs are lovely right at the end, yeah? Rather than at the start where you cook it out and all that aroma goes into the air and we lose it out of the food, OK? All right, and that just goes on the greaseproof paper. And Gary, I'm... Uh, You're done, aren't I'm you? I'm done on this side, so I've got the tomato tea, the, the bacon crumble ready. Um, off to you. In the challenge, the dish that I would have chosen to do would have been a little poached egg salad. I would have done like little matchstick croutons and uh, blanched the tomatoes, deseeded them, taken the skin off, cut those into little battens and formed like a little nest. Um, poached the egg in cling film with the croutons. So, you know, in terms of how I would do the croutons, slice the bread, take the crusts off and then cut little little battens from it. And using an appropriate amount of oil to get those croutons really browning nicely and evenly. Put the thyme in, which flavours the oil. So you're looking for a good colour and to cook them really, really quickly and as evenly as, as possible. Pinch of salt. The heat that you had under them must be pretty important because they were very quick in and out. Yeah, in and so out. So is that That's like just the way, look, I've been taught, that's how I've been taught, you know. Uh, you can make croutons in the oven, but you're going to end up with quite a dry, uh, crusty crouton, whereas those still have got a bit of chew in them. So what I'm going to do is, with the tomato, just replicate the, the crouton. A little pinch of salt. Touch of oil. And we've got these little croutons now. All right, and that's sort of the foundation of my little salad. Now, Julia, you're going to come up and I'll show you how to do, do the eggs. So remember, Julia, when you were doing the egg and bacon challenge, Julia was struggling um, poaching her egg in cling film. Now, where did you get the idea of poaching in cling film? Do you um, remember? No, I read it somewhere I'd, ages ago. That's like reading how to fly a helicopter, <laughs> jumping in and thinking you can do it. Yeah. It doesn't work. So, touch of oil. You just want to spread that over the cling film. 
and then you want to drop this cling film into the thing. This is what I saw you struggling with. Put the egg in. And then what you want to do is you want to draw up the cling film and then try and expel the air, all right? So you want to get it so it's like that, all right? And then what you want to do is you want to twist it once you've expelled the air. You want to twist it down to get the shape that you want. And then once you've got the shape, now you've got to tie it, right? And once you get it so you've fed it through, you've got to push that knot down. Is you're trying to get it so it's like that. Yeah. All right? Does that look like the one you did? Not exactly. Not exactly, <laughs> but not far off. You, you were nearly there. If I could have got you just to take that, you know you were felt under pressure because you're running out of time. If I could have get you to spend that little extra minute or two, you would have achieved that, all right? So that's gonna plomp into water. It's just on a simmer. It needs to be in there for four and a half, five minutes. Julia, thank you very much. Go and sit down. Hope high you learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I might construct my, um, my salad. Remember, I've got my battens of tomatoes and I've got my little croutons. Now, you've just got to be really gentle with this. It's a bit of bacon over the top of the egg. Give it a bit of texture. And then I'm just going to drop a few of these little um, shoots over the top. This is celery leaf, so it's young young celery leaf, okay? Okay, so I've got my tomato tea, and I gently just pour that in, and basically just flood the bottom of the bowl. That's, that's, that's all we need. And those croutons at the bottom will soak up that lovely tea flavour. And just a couple of little dribbles of the olive oil. And I reckon, <laughs> along with the little croutons, because we've got our dipping philosophy, and the tomato tea, that even though that's really two dishes put together, I reckon that's, I reckon that's smashing. <laughs> Poe, Trevor and Chris, if you want to come up and have a little dig around, have a taste. We'll give you a bit more bacon. Oh, yeah, 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 nice. Yeah. Thank bacon. you. Mm. See, that's eggs in heaven, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so in summary, it's a beautiful um, poached egg done in cling film. Um, uh, the tomatoes, you know, really key important with the tomato tea especially, get the best tomatoes you can get. Allow it to steep, poached egg, four to five minutes. And creativity, yeah, you know, as Gary was said, the way you cut something adds a different dimension to flavour, texture, so forth, yeah? So the next one. Little bit of a little bit of a revisit on our last challenge, which was a rabbit and ten ingredients from the pantry, if you can remember. We were pleasantly surprised by some and really disappointed by others, weren't we? There were some bad dishes in there, but out of that, there were some good dishes too. Delightful dish. I think a five-year-old could cook better than that. <laughs> you, you've got some good basic flavours in there. I mean, Rabbit, it, let, let, let's be quite honest. In terms of breaking the beast down, it is, it is difficult, yeah? All right? It's not simple. So hence why Gary's going to demonstrate that today. So, and, and think about how it's made up. It's made of balls and joints. Made, it's made of sinews. That's what divides each cut of meat, all right? And then think about, well, how does the beast actually work? Well, it runs with its front legs, so what's going to be the toughest? The front legs. That, that centre bit there is the laziest bit of meat. It doesn't do any work. You know what I mean? So that's going to be tender. So a tender cut of meat generally means it doesn't need as much cooking time. OK, where the back legs, which are really delicious, um, need to be braised or, you know, need to be boned out, stuffed and roasted in an oven with lots of garlic and thyme and all those beautiful flavours. So we've got some lovely, lovely little bunnies that we're going to show you how to butcher properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide off um, the, the front runners. What you're following is a natural line of sinew and connectivity here. I'm going to take off the legs. And it's going to leave me with this sort of central saddle and rib cage, which I'm going to divide off. So I'm going to remove the kidney. 
all right, and the, and the liver. Now again, on your rib cage, think of your own rib cage, there's no bone that connects it together. It's not fused, it's, it's connective tissue. And like a surgeon, I'm gonna divide the rib cage. Now, a rib cage and a loin. Remove that little bit of spine, because I don't need it. And then I'm gonna hand this over to George, pretty much straight away, because I want him to crack on and make a rolled loin that Andre attempted to do. So I've got two loins of rabbit and the two little fillets, and, what, and these are a bavettes, or the belly in French, okay? Which we're gonna use, and that's gonna go to George. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So just to recap, Gary, if I could borrow you, if you could just turn around. Mmm, oh no, sorry. <laughs> that's where the, uh, the loins belong, and the fillets belong on the inside of Gary, yeah? Okay? Directly in front of the, the loins, okay?